Hey everybody, Dr. Gorchu here. Today, I'm coming to you with another how-to video. Photogrammetry. So what is photogrammetry? Photogrammetry is when you take pictures of a real world object and you compute them in the software and then you get a 3D model out of it. Here's what you need to know before shooting. Have an overcast day so that there's no harsh shadows. Make sure you have an object to shoot. Have fun. Shooting tips. Lock your ISO. Lock your aperture. Lock everything down so that the photos don't look different from one photo to the other. And make sure you use a telephoto. Like for example, if you have a camera with a zoom dial, make sure you zoom all the way in so that the pictures are not too deformed. So it's easier for the software to recognize the shape. Let's go shooting. It's a lot of photos. Make sure they're sharp. Now we're gonna load them into the software. All right, now we're back home and we're just gonna import all the images that we took into a photogrammetry software. It doesn't have to be this software, it could be basically any other software. Don't fixate on this software, there's a lot out there. Just pick the one that works best for you and just use that. So basically I'm gonna just import all those pictures I took. I'm gonna go through them and I'm gonna find which ones are blurred out. Because for small objects like this, it's really easy to get parts of the texture and parts of the model that are not in focus, especially the background, it's never gonna be in focus. So working on bigger objects, you wouldn't have this problem. So I'm just going through the textures to see what makes sense. And as you can see this, I mean this can, I, I made sure there's condensation on it because it's a very re reflective can. And what happens with reflective objects is that the software cannot really understand the depth because every time you move the camera, the reflections move according to your, to your point of view. And that's not cool. So the condensation really helped with that. So if you really can't find a way to make the object unreflective, use a baby, baby powder or whatever. Uh, make sure your software really takes advantage of your graphic card and, and makes it makes the processing faster. So here I just created a arbitrary point cloud data just to see what I'm working with. And usually in these photogrammetry software you get a cage that defines the space you want to work in. So you just set the area you want to work with and you know like so the computer doesn't have to calculate all the extra stuff around it and try to make sense of that because sometimes it's <laughs> out of focus or you know, you've got barrel distortion on your camera and that doesn't make sense to the software and it just tries to make some mistakes. So basically narrow down the area that your computer is going to you know, compute so it makes it easier, makes it faster. After this, what we're gonna do is build a dense cloud. Basically, we said, okay, the cameras are aligned, everything is working perfectly. Now, let's you know make it very dense point cloud data. So, usually there'll be some anomalies here and there. And the top of the bottle here is very reflective, so it really couldn't understand the depth of that. So, I'm just going here and deleting all those points that were created that were basically anomalies. And, uh, you know, they're just gonna cause problem when you create a mesh. So you want to just delete any floating points or whatever you see. And oh my God, that is a horrible top. Uh, we could take a separate pictures of those with baby powder applied to it so that it's not so reflective to really get that shape out. But in this case, I'm just going to show you how this process is done. So I'm not really gonna concentrate on that too much. So look around your model. Make sure everything's cool. I love how it picked up all these details on the table, but the bottle is like <laughs> not there. So we're just gonna make a mesh real quick and we're gonna see the shaded. Now you can see the texture is really blurry because we haven't yet um, calculated a texture space for this. So we're gonna build a texture. The cool thing about these software, the one I'm using is Agisoft Photoscan, where you can set how many panels of texture you wanna give one object so you could have like four 4k maps or in this case two 8k texture maps because I really want a really high resolution so I can even read the texts on it so you know you press and then you go have a nice cup of coffee and you come back and you see and you select your shaded mode it will take a while and then you'll see the texture now sometimes you're gonna get misalignment 
and uh, you know it's it's annoying but it's fixable what you're gonna do next is because these models that come out of these photogrammetry software are way too dense way way too dense and their topology is just like all over the place it's really hard to fix it's really hard to work with so what we're gonna do for a simple shape like this it'll take no time we're gonna export out a model into obj fbx whatever your software can do and open it in the software that you're very comfortable in modeling and texturing so make sure you export the, the, the textures as jpegs because it'll build a, a transition between the, the seams so you won't get really weird white lines all over your model so i'm just going to open it in 3 Studio max in some uh, very comfortable in Max. Uh, when you bring it into the software, the object is usually oriented in a very weird fashion. <laughs> so you make sure you basically put it upright so you have a more easier time in modeling, basically. And to make sure it's to scale. I mean, usually at this point, you make sure that your objects are to, to scale. You know, if, if I put eight centimeters, I don't really know how <laughs> tall this bottom is. I should have Googled it at least, but I didn't. So. You know, you, I just build a model that kind of represented a bottle. I mean, I can't. I keep saying a bottle. And I went ahead and quickly just defined the UV where these textures would lie. So the, the whole can around it is one piece and the top and bottom are two separate pieces. And you can see the high poly mesh is just way too messy to work with. So what I'm going to do here, this is, this, um, this is called texture projection. Basically what we're going to do is project the texture of uh, one object, which is the high poly in this case, and project it onto this newly built, very neat model. And um, for Max, it's rendered to texture. So we're going to make sure the, the low poly, the UVs are right and everything, and pick the, the high poly and then project the maps onto the low poly maps. This method can be done using so many different software out there. Even Marmoset Toolbag 3 does that. And Mama said 2 x 3 is really good in doing that because it can even do normal maps really nicely. It can do height maps, any kind of maps, and just bake it onto the new model that you've created. So make sure you save the file wherever you like, whatever resolution you like. And um, what this does is make it makes uh, the model more manageable. And also, if there are any texturing problems when you did the photogrammetry, it makes it really easier to go and fix. Now here, my computer crashed and I had to redo this. I thought, you know, it's better for you guys to see again what the process is. And, and I'm not really going to go into detail uh, on what buttons I pressed and things like that. If you guys really like me to make a tutorial about each section, please comment down below and uh, like this video so I know you guys want to see a more in-depth tutorial this is a very workflow oriented because people really don't know about photogrammetry and I really want people to take advantage of it it's so much fun to do so as you can see start rendering and um, it's got shadows we don't want any the shadows that's why I specified that I only want the diffuse map to be projected onto the new model so I'm just gonna go in and find the diffuse map and apply it to this new model and that looks pretty good but one problem was that when I was doing my UV space uh, I didn't realize that uh, the scale was off so <laughs> the side of the bottle I mean the main texture space was a bit squished so when I opened it up I realized oh my god look at these messy textures that we had and now this nice beautiful neat texture but you see it's very squished so I'm just gonna readjust the um, UV map and just give that a bit more space because the top and bottom not really important at this point I just want to get the bottle texture nicely there and I just re-render it make sure the cage is just pushed out a little bit so it projects the right amount of stuff all those red spots are basically things that it couldn't project there was nothing to project so later we'll go and fix that up so I'm just copying the new bottle and seeing the texture again I feel like this one is much better but you have all those red spots and weird anomalies on the texture and we're just gonna go and fix that up and the textures that are created I, there's usually a blur value in 3d software for aliasing issues 
So I'm just going to turn that off, make sure my I get the sharpest texture I can. Uh, because usually when you load a texture into a 3D software, they blur it a bit so that when you render it, it doesn't have any... I mean, that it lowers the chance of moiré and things like that. So I went ahead and chose the pictures that I thought illustrated the textures I wanted to fix the right way. So what I did, I just <laughs> copied that and just made sure it is, it's the same size and just masked it out and just surgically put it in the right place. Uh, for this Coca-Cola logo, it was just quite easy to do that. And I'm not being sponsored by Coca-Cola. It's just, I love Coca-Cola, man. They're good. I wish I could have one right now. Hey, I could have one right now. But I have to get up all the way to the fridge. This is hard. What are you making me do? Anyway, I'm just fixing the texture, as you can see. I mean, you could spend a lot more time doing this. This took me an hour doing this, but... I'm sure if you spend more time on it, you would get nicer textures. As you can see, this texture is pretty good. It's got condensation on there, but you, know, you can use it anywhere. You can place it, use it as a rendering thing or, or any other application you want to use it in. The cool thing is that you can take something from the real world and, and without much effort, put it inside the virtual world, wherever you're, whatever you're making, a game or a movie or whatever, and they look pretty nice, you know, representative of, of their real world object. So it's really good for VFX and things like that. I hope you like this video and comment down below what you would like to see. If I see enough comments asking for a tutorial on certain parts, I will definitely like to make more videos. And don't worry, I've shaved since I recorded the video and uh, the goatee is coming back. Don't you worry at all. Love you all and you uh... Go there and capture whatever you like and you put it inside your computer and just do it more and more and more because it's just so much fun doing it. Like look at this mosque I captured in Iran. Beautiful. And now I have it in 3D. I can look at it from any angle I like. How awesome is that? So go out there and whenever you take pictures, take a couple more for photogrammetry, alright? I'll catch you guys later. Bye bye now. So that was how to do photogrammetry. Now if you like this process and you would like to get into more of it, I'm sure there's a lot of tutorials out there, but if you would like me to do those tutorials, please like this video and ask me in the comments below to do a tutorial on different parts. Maybe you would like to, me to do a tutorial on the remodeling phase or the Agisoft photo scan phase and what trickery I can do to help you there. Whatever it is, thank you for watching. Dr. Goji out. Oh god, it's so hot in here. I'm dying. Ah! Hey everybody, Dr. Goji here. You might be wondering what is photogrammetry. It's uh... Makes me... All the explanations, alright? Don't ask me! What is photogrammetry? You might be wondering. Well, it's when you take a lot of pictures of an object and the computer computes it, understands the dimensionality of it. So, you might be wondering what is photogrammetry? I don't know why you clicked on this video. Where'd you come from? I don't know. Why'd you click on this video? You want to know photogrammetry? I'll explain it to you. It's taking this real object and then putting it into the computer and getting it that looks much nicer. Look at that. Do we go now? Or... Have you subscribed yet? Yeah.